rock star in Japan. So without further ado, welcome up, Yuhio. <laughs> Very welcome. Have a seat. So, welcome to the Sim stage. And thank you. Thank you very much for being here with us. Um, what I wanted to start by asking you is, is uh, sort of how how did how was Yuhio created? You were living in Sundsvall. You were sort of uh, not having your market there, and you're a super good guitarist. And all of a sudden, you're in Japan and a star. How, how did that happen? Um, I don't think that I created myself, that was my parents' job, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, I think that I've always been surrounded by music because I'm from a musical family, and uh, it kind of naturally evolved from there. Uh, and uh, my interest for Japan has been since I was a small child. You uh, speak Japanese too, and you learned that yeah. yourself, I, I read. Yeah. And that's because I'm very passionate about the Japanese culture and everything, and the language. So, uh, the Japanese interest mixed with the music interest just naturally flowed together, so. But it must have been sort of a day before and a day after you sort of, you put on manga girl suits and <laughs> went out on stage. That uh, must have been sort of a pretty bold decision. Yeah, I guess so, but it was something I wanted to do, so. I mean, someday, I just decided that I was going to order those clothes. And my mom's like, oh, are you really going to wear that? I was like, yeah, I just ordered it. So <laughs> live with it. Uh, <laughs> many, many companies are afraid to be too different or lose their, sort of, uh, lose their, uh, their brand or they, they're not edgy enough. You are, yeah. uh, I mean, a lot of things I would assume are fake when I see the, the Yuhi on stage, but you're super authentic and real anyway. So how, how can you combine that with sort of communicating and visuality and storytelling and still being super authentic? I think the key to being authentic is just being passionate, as you talked about. Because if you're not passionate about something, it will always be fake anyways. So you have to be real with yourself. and. And for you, that starts with music. Yeah. And, and, and you said, well, when we discussed before, you said that, and you know, I said, how do, you, how do you sort of dare to be different? You said, you do different things that you like, and you'll find some people that like you somewhere. Focus on them, not on the other guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. And could you elaborate on, on that a little bit? Tell me more. Well, I think that it takes too much energy to focus on all the people that don't like you. So just ignore them. and start focusing on the people that do like you and do like the stuff you're doing. So but where you grew up, it's like a uh, manly man with beer and out hunting in the forest <laughs> almost kind of thing. And here yeah. you're, you're sort of walking around, you heeing on the street. Didn't you have a lot of negative pressure on yourself or weren't, wasn't that a tough, a tough journey? Uh, it was tough in some ways, but still I never really cared about the haters or anything. So it's been fine for me. <laughs> And who are your fans? Tell us about a little bit about Japan and what. Um, my fans are mostly girls from like 14 to 25 years old, and um, it's very mixed actually. In Japan, there's mostly those uh, Visual K fans mm. in general. Visual K, it's a, it's a music style that yeah. very few people know here. It's the Japanese take on glam rock. Visual K, where it's, it yeah. needs to be visual, it needs to be really musical, yeah. and it needs to be, uh, and it's also cross gender and, and sort of plays around with different yeah, exactly. concepts. So, those fans really love me in Japan, but still, I get like old ladies and old gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> coming to my live shows too, and uh, people that I never thought would like my music. So, I'm kind of broad. And what, what is what is the uh, sort of what do you do online? Do you communicate with the fans, or how do you how do you sort of do you have an yeah. internet strategy? Or I use Twitter a lot, mm -hmm. like every day, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of um, replies all the time. Uh, so when I feel that I have the time, I reply to like many fans at once. So I get like a reply spree, and I do that. Yeah, like twice a month or something. And then they get happy and they get the answers that they wanted. And 
And what about YouTube and other channels? Do you see sort of, as a musical artist, do you see yourself selling records or selling songs on, on the likes of um, iTunes or is it concerts that are, will be the main focus? Uh, well, it's both, I guess. I really like doing live shows, so that's the focus for me personally. But for the record company, I think it's mostly selling records, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's both. What do you think if you, by a strike of a magic wand, became the, the CEO or a marketing director of a, of a traditional brand, what would you sort of bring with you from, from the way you think about thinking differently and doing differently now? I think I just, I would bring my passion. That's all, <laughs> because that's the best you can have. And how can you, how can, what brands are your passion? What, what things do you like apart from music? Um, well, I really like uh, writing like books mm -hmm. and novels too. So literature and uh, clothes, of course. Uh, yeah, that's what I like. And, and uh, we're also going uh, to, we, we learned today from, from a gentleman writing a book called Heavy Metal Management, and he said, you know, brands need to be epic, they need to be good storytellers, they yeah. need to be hella good at, at, at what they're doing, uh, because otherwise we don't care. So what I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, is could we get a, get a, get a guitar up here and hear you play? Guitar? Um, or, no? A microphone, a microphone is good enough. Yeah, of course. So, uh, sure. thank you very much. Give it up for you here.
Tack så mycket! Du får den här av mig. Fantastiskt! Tack så mycket! Tack så väl!